has definitely changed. We're looking at now, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stature. We're talking, you know, Pulitzer Prizes and Tony nominations. Um, in the 1980s and 90s, that wasn't even an option or thought. Um, but it's become very much like music, like blues and other types of music. It's now part of the American culture and it's accepted more broadly. And I think that could help change the perception because when you think about it, this play, you know, kind of touches on, you know, the history of it and that uh, it's been around for a long time. It's just, it was so underground that not a lot of people got exposure, especially here in the flyover states. But it's been, it was such an important part of people's lives that helped create it. It was not just something for them to do. It was a part of their lives. It kept some of them sane. It kept a lot of people out of trouble. It let them communicate effectively and let them express the art within themselves in a way that they probably didn't have the chance of doing like theater or dance or cello or something. So I think that hopefully our play will kind of shed light on that, that it's been around for a long time and it's not just like your character. It's not just something you're doing because you're bored. That's part of it, but it's something you have to do and it's, it's an expression of art just like any other expression of art. And it's, and it's now accepted, I think, and respected just like any other. Like that. And I hope for the people who aren't connected to hip-hop in any way will begin to see that hip-hop isn't filled with just, you know, rebels and hooligans. Like, there are real people who, you know, they express themselves in one of the four elements of hip-hop because it's a part of who they are and it's a part of, you know, themselves and they just want to show the world and it's not to be rebellious or not to, you know, defy any older generation. And some of that part is a little important, but it's not the only reason, though. But the, the, exactly. the rebellion and the defiance is kind of... It's kind of, yeah, yeah it's, it's important. what makes it good, you know. I think yeah. Christopher Diaz has created um, a play. I mean, it's a, it's a little play about a small glimpse of Puerto Rican culture, which is very important. I mean, what's happening in Puerto Rico now is insane. Yeah. Um, putting them in the spotlight in the way that other artists have in Puerto Rico or people with Puerto Rican parents. But he's created a little, a little family piece, a little piece about relationships and um, using hip hop as a tool, I think it's a, a creative way of doing that. But I think it's just a little, a nice little play about, about the relationships of people. There's very, there's very few people in a very specific part of a very large town. And, you know, there's a million stories just like this that go on every day. And I think it's just a small glimpse into that life. I feel like he's captured a real story. Right. You know what I mean? Because there are a lot of plays that you read now and it's like, oh man, it was so good. But they all kind of follow the same pattern. You know, they tolerant. start here, they, there's the conflict, then there's the resolution. Oh, and then the play's over and everybody's happy. With this play, it, you're watching it and you're reading it and you're like, wow, this is real. You know, there's no, oh, this is one big conflict that we're all having. Everybody's fighting their own battles right. and going through their own journeys. And you get a glimpse into all of their lives and see how, you know, they come together, right. you know, and how it feeds off of each other. And that's what, you know, real life is about. This isn't a typical right. play that there's somebody's There's not like a plot and subplot and subplot. Yeah, yeah, this isn't a typical show that somebody's used to seeing, which is why I think so many people are going to enjoy it. Because they're going to be like, wow, that's... It's life. I try to explain it to people when I, I tell them how the story, you know, unfolds and everything. It's like, do you like Netflix, Netflix originals? Yeah, it's a lot like that. It doesn't really stay in conformity, and right. it's interesting, and, you know, it's not your stereotypical, he but you'll wrote love a it. Netflix so, original if you like Netflix series. originals, you're going to love this. And hey. I think that's a great brand. You know how, you know, you know how we've been saying that his show would look great on screen? Uh -huh. It's a Netflix original series. <laughs> we should, that's it. Come and film it. Yeah. Christopher Diaz, we're waiting. <laughs> Emma and we're both in Welcome to Arroyos at Artista La Rosa. Um, it's opening soon. Uh, come see it, please. We'd love to see you there. I'd love to talk to you after the show. You can get tickets online at www.artistadelarosa.com. And uh, do you have anything you want to say, little sister? <laughs> put me on the spot. Can't wait. Thank <laughs> you.